Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant 1 video. Today I'm doing a video on my thoughts on the WandaVision trailer. Um, yeah, it looks really different, unique, um, for sure. I mean, other than the obvious being Doctor Who Twice Upon a Time doing the sort of visual effect of being in 4x3 and all the older sort of black and white aesthetic and then changing the colour and then widening which I think is a beautiful effect and I loved it in Twice Upon a Time and I love it here really um, it's such a unique thing that it makes sense Doctor Who did it at least once um, and that because obviously Doctor Who's heritage and all history goes as far back as to the 1960s which obviously Marvel Cinematic Universe doesn't but funnily enough I'm pretty sure the comics would do uh, because the comics, the Marvel comics have been around for 80 years like you know they, they ha had I think last year I think it was so maybe even 81 years now uh, or at least some point this year maybe they might be 81 years old um, but Marvel Comics had like a special 1000th issue release uh, either this year or last year for the 80th anniversary of Marvel Comics so although the cinematic universe doesn't date that far back it's a nice like almost little homage to the diehard comic book readers to be like yeah we know that although the, our franchise in, in its current form it hasn't been around since the 60s our comics have and and that so that I like that. I love the fact that it's all staticky, as I say, and then the Marvel uh, sort of studios logo comes up, and then there's a really old-fashioned sort of 1950s, 60s car. It plays with a lot of like sort of old-school sitcom tropes, but also it seems like it's going from 60s to maybe 70s slash 80s, and then maybe even the 90s, you know. And I wonder if it'll go through each of those sort of respective eras slash time periods um, you know sort of tried and tested sort of big sitcom tropes you know of the 60s and then the 80s and then whatever it was in the 90s you know um, and I wonder if it'll do that for you know like maybe two episodes two to three episodes each one so we get like a total of maybe nine episodes or, or anywhere between six and nine episodes maybe or six and yeah anywhere between six and nine episodes I think for this series would be good uh, or a good amount we don't know if it's going to be episodic like the Mandalorian um, and that or if they're going to do a Netflix and just dump it all on the streaming service all at once honestly I'd rather them set a precedent for their exclusives to always be episodic because I think that way they can tell if a show really has got an audience and also people foaming at the mouth as it were to watch this particular show you know um, and also I guess it gives them a better idea of like where do people where was the highest ratings and where was the dip and where was the uh, as I say where did it go back up or did it plateau at any point and if so then they can use that information to hopefully make a second season or a you know, a different Disney Plus uh, exclusive sort of show better maybe with that data from this one maybe, I don't know. But yeah, I, I'll i be honest, I have mm, I, I don't know much about Scarlet Witch or Vision, either in the comics or that much in the cinematic universe. I, I've, I've, I've seen them from, I think, their inception in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But either way, I, I feel like they were sort of introduced sort of part way through the Marvel Cinematic Universe to the point where I didn't feel as connected to them as the core, you know, Avengers of like Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow and Hawkeye, you know, they're the main six I would say. Um but I think this is based around after I th I feel like this timeline wise fits between Infinity War and uh Endgame. And I just say that because I'm pretty sure uh thingy has died um vision has died because there's that one woman in that car who says you know starts being like laughing and then he's like why what's so funny and that and then he's and then she's like uh you're dead or or, or or she says something about like yeah you're dead 
um, and that, and then starts laughing and, and, and that. And um, so, as I say, I, I feel like this could be like a pocket universe, a specific universe that maybe um, Scarlet Witch makes whilst she's grieving the loss of vision, because I'm pretty sure in the Thanos snap, he gets taken out of the picture. I think I could be wrong about that. It's been a while since I've watched Infinity War and Endgame. I know, hashtag fake fan. But yeah, I, I, I'd I like that. It gives me really, and this is saying something considering I don't actually watch Stranger Things. I know I'm a horrible human being. But um, but I, I genuinely get this sort of, yeah, Stranger Things sort of vibe. Maybe that's what they're going for. And also, I feel like this, because it's a TV show, it seems so much more bolder and da risk risky and daring and unique. It feels like a smaller scale version of something like Doctor Strange as well, you know, with this sort of source wielder sort of character. You know, she goes like this and then Vision's face changes to a normal bloke's face. It's so funny as well that they've got the actress who played Kitty from that 70s show, which is a sitcom, and that, that I thought was genius, uh, and that she's asking, like, you know, uh, the actress who plays Vision, uh, no, not Vision, the actress who plays uh, Scarlet Witch, you know, oh, what, what brought you, you know, your husband and, and, and yourself here, and where are you, where are you from originally, and what are your jobs, and da-da-da-da-da, and that, and then she starts you know, sort of stump, getting stumped by that, and then the guy's like, tell us, tell us, and starts smacking the, like, table and that. Um, and, yeah, that, that bit felt very intense, and uh, and there was a lot of tense atmosphere there, and that almost kind of gave me more horror vibes, which was a bit weird. Um, but, again, that adds to the idea and, and my theory, my, my tinfoil hat mad theory that maybe this is all in her head, you know, um, I love the fact that they snuck in, again, going back to the earlier comment about a homage to, like, sort of old comics uh, and, and a, a wink and a nod to the fans. Um, I love the fact that, you know, there's a bit where she's, like, dancing uh, and she's in the full, you know, sort of OG original Scarlet Witch costume from the really early comics from whatever year it was that she was first introduced. And likewise with Vision, there's a bit where it's like clearly Halloween time and he's in his original sort of costume and that. Uh, and I love that. There's a bit where he like zooms up into space and then it pans around him and he's like looking down at the, the sort of uh, suburb area where they are or where they live. And... Um, and that was very Superman-esque, you know, there's no way of, around that really, uh, I guess. What makes me think that this is her own v virtual world and or bubble and reality is because there's a bit where someone gets blasted in and or maybe out of somewhere and then it goes like there's a force field and then it just goes and then she's like on the ground and then there are sort of men in black slash FBI agent people so maybe they're trying to figure out where Scarlet Witch has gone maybe she's gone off grid and the Avengers need her or something or you know or, or people are like where the hell's she gone you know uh, if if she's gone rogue uh, if she's gone off the grid and or turned back to being a baddie or or maybe she's been manipulated by someone maybe she could kill us all or, or you know destroy uh, our military bases or our government or da 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 or whatever but yeah um I'll be honest I do kind of like the actress who plays Scarlet Witch as in like I think she's kind of hot <laughs> um and that I'm not gonna lie but um I don't know why I just randomly said that but yeah um what else uh, yeah I, I saying that the actors are both the main guy the guy who plays Vision and the person who plays Scarlet Witch they're both really big actors now I guess because of the Marvel films so in that respect I'm surprised they both said yes to this although I guess Disney would throw a lot of money at them even if they are doing a a, a TV show which might be only an eight part mini series and maybe it might only be one series as well I did watch a video uh, an analyzing about like this trailer slash this person's hopes and expectations for this series, and they made the valid point. I can't remember the YouTuber's name, unfortunately. It might be like Captain Midnight, I think his name was. But either way, he said something about 
potentially wanting it there to be just one series of this because he hates the idea that it would be two, three, four series and it just buckle under its own weight and also really only be good for two series and then drag it out for a third and fourth series and it just be shit by that point, you know? Um, and I kind of agree, I would like quality over qu quantity and this looks like it might be. I think it's either written or directed by a person who's never actually written and directed a TV show before, so that is a little bit worrying, uh, to say the least, so either directing de it might be a bit worrying there. Hopefully Kevin Feige, the guy who does most of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is there on standby and or sort of giving this person pointers and or comics to read maybe or um, or whatnot. But yeah, um, what else? Uh, the music's really good for this trailer. It's shot really well. Like it's got like a nice level of like montages and action and. Or, or a little bit of action here and there. But yeah, I guess in that respect, action-wise, it's it's totally different. There is very minimal, I'd say like, maybe 4, 5% at most of this trailer was action, I guess. And also the trailer is only a handful of minutes long. It's not a very long trailer. It just says that it's coming soon as well, which I'm a little bit worried about because I'm worried that... If that is the case, then it might drop, like, on a similar sort of time, or on the toes of, like, Mandalorian Season 2. I'd rather this come out in January next year, so that then Mandalorian's definitely had its time in the, sh in the sunshine and our time to breathe, and then we get this, as opposed to people liking Mandalorian, maybe they stop watching this because they know WandaVision's on there, and then they watch that instead or vice versa you know people are a bit like mm, I don't know how I feel about one division I'll just watch Mandalorian instead because I know what that is because it's a known quantity more so because again it's a second season of a, th of a thing as opposed to one division which isn't a known quantity granted these characters are because they've had big massive movies but then again this is a smaller thing it's a lot more indie a lot more experimental um, and as I say it has a lot more of an indie creative wacky um, sort of vibe to it really, uh, in all honesty, which is, uh, I'm really happy about, I'm really glad that Marvel Studios has finally sort of taken, and Disney have taken sort of such a, a risk, you know, a creative risk with this show, um, and hopefully it pays off with people watching it and or maybe getting more people into the, the, the streaming service for them, I guess. Because um, another thing to take into consideration is that, um, is is that it will it I can't remember what I was gonna say now. Um yeah, I mean hopefully it will get more more attention or more people on the platform and that um and that is what I was just saying. And and also it bolsters that sort of ca uh, that sort of um uh, catalogue they have because I do think at the moment they don't have a lot a lot of content and especially uh, exclusive content. They have all the legacy sort of Star Wars films and and legacy. If you're a Star Wars fan, then Disney Plus is the streaming service for you. But other than that, you've got Mandalorian, you've got Marvel films, you've got all your old Star Wars stuff, Clone Wars and Rebels, and then also Disney classics and Simpsons. And yeah, sure, that's enough for me. But for other people, it might not be. And this might be the thing that gets people to get the subscription service and I've just remembered the thing I was going to say earlier which is that this clearly looks like it's going to be a big thing for a lot of people because it in a week has got 14 million views 14 million views which doesn't sound like a lot but in a week Mandalorian season 2 has had 10 million in two weeks or since that trailer has been up so you know trailer wise this one's been watched more but whether or not that actually translates to people actually watching the show I don't know and again, will they drop all of this on on all on one go? Will it overlap with Mandalorian? Will it all be there and then? Will people binge watch it then? And as opposed to being bothered to keep week to week watching Mandalorian, or will it be episodic as well? And if so, then will people have to juggle the two, or will they watch one over the other? 
who knows. Um, but yeah, the trailer was really cool, and I like a lot of the cool experimental visual look and the black and whiteness, and then it going to, as I say, the bigger sort of colour and, and, and or aspect ratio, and as I said earlier, it really reminded me of Twice Upon a Time, and I love the effect there, so I still love it here. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching, or oh, if you have any thoughts on Wonder Vision trailer, please do feel free to comment them below, and uh, thanks for watching, please do comment, rate, and subscribe.